Okay, let's start with um, the basics in here of getting on. No, can't get logged in. Have you been on before? You were, okay. Um, all right, we're gonna go through the syllabus now. So I gave you a paper copy, and if you do happen to be online on Blackboard, um, it is located here as well. So everything I'm gonna talk to you about in Blackboard is on this sheet. The difference is in Blackboard, the hyperlinks actually work, so you can see a lot of information um, and go to those sites. So um, on the front page, I have my email address. Um, obviously, that's the one that you're gonna use to contact me. My office hours are Monday after 1, 1 to 1.30, and then Wednesday noon hours. And all that means is that I'm available in my office, which is at the end of the hall, the business and technology offices. So if you come down and ask the ladies at the front if I'm available, if they'll get me, they will. You don't need to have an appointment. You can just stop in. Um, when I'm on campus, I'm, you know, kind of available a lot to chat, but I'm also doing other things every now and then. So if you need an appointment, let me know. Otherwise, those are drop-in hours for sure. Okay. Um, the book. The book. This is the book. You need this one. <laughs> um, Adobe updates their software all the time now. It's subscription-based. Um, you need to have a subscription to the Adobe Creative Cloud. And hopefully you saw that online and or at orientation. Has everybody done that? Is there anybody who does not have Adobe Creative Cloud yet? Okay. All right, that's gonna be a problem for today because we use it right away. So where you need to go, did you see the email about it on Blackboard? You need to go to this website. It's in Blackboard in the announcements, emergent.onthehub.com because you can get the Creative Cloud for $125 for the whole year, the whole cloud. That's way cheaper than the Adobe student rate and that's way cheaper than the real life rate. It's way cheap. I've never seen it that cheap. So you need to buy your own subscription to the Adobe Creative Cloud. You need to log in as a student with your student email when you buy it. That's what's going to show that you're eligible for that rate because nobody else is eligible for that rate unless you're a tech school student. So that's a necessity. Um, here's the fun part. Every October at um, Adobe, what do they call it now? Adobe World or Adobe Wow or I don't know, they release the next update. So the middle of October, this is going to be old news already, which stinks. But they don't change all of it. They just add some new updates here and there, and we'll find out what they are, and we'll use them. So make sure you have the 2019 book and the 2019 book files, which I'll show you in a minute, that we're going to need with it. Okay. So you need a book. You need a subscription to Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, like it says in the syllabus down here, um, you must use your student email and here's the link to go get the software. You also then need a method for storing large graphic files. The cool thing is when you own the Adobe Cloud, um, Creative Cloud, you get online storage with them already. So you're working at home on a project, you save it to the cloud, you come here, you open it. There's no such thing as forgetting your work at home or it's on your other hard drive or your jump drive or whatever. It's cloud storage. Um, you also have um, the Microsoft Office 365 with your student email and with your account here. And that has, um, what's it called, OneDrive? What can I think? OneDrive, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, free storage there. Um, so go ahead and make sure you use those. Don't save things locally on this computer because um, somebody else can be sitting here next time. And if you saved it locally to this hard drive, you're out of luck and you can't get it from home. And at any time, if IT decides to figure out how to do reset on these machines, they would be wiped out every night of whatever's on them. So don't save locally. Save to a jump drive or your cloud, preferably. Okay. Um, who's had computer platform essentials with Kelly? Just a handful of you, right? The smaller class already met. So she's going to talk heavily about all of that. The rest of you don't get it until next Monday, right? So Kelly will really walk you through all of that. So don't worry. Yeah, there's nothing to save this first week with me, so don't worry about that. All right. Um, core ability is what we're going to learn in general. College has these core abilities that they want us to always be teaching you. But the competencies of this class are the 16 things that we're going to make sure you understand before you leave Illustrator. 
Um, moving down to grading. So the grading scale here is different than high school, I suspect, because that used to be 90, 80, 70, as I recall. Um, it's definitely um, a harder grading scale here, but we are in college and we're trying to prepare you for the workforce and the reality of um, you have to be a good designer to make it. You can't be a so-so designer and have a career, to be perfectly honest. You just can't. It's too competitive. So A's are 93%, B's are 86 and a C is 80%. You have to earn a C or higher in your program classes to pass them and to move on. <laughs> so if you don't earn a C, there is no such thing as a D. There's just a fail. Okay? You'll have to take it again um, before you can move on. Um, design fundamentals, Photoshop, Illustrator tend to be prerequisites for your next classes too to keep moving on in the program. So my, we all have different policies for late work, but mine is what you see here. Everything we learn in this book keeps building and building and building. You can't skip chapters one through three and jump into chapter four and be successful because you didn't learn the tools of chapters one through three. So whatever I give you for assignments, they're due on the date that I tell you, and you'll get a grade based on that work. If they're late, up to three days late, they're going to start at a 90% and go down from there if you have anything wrong or errors or whatever. If they're in the rest of that first week late, so four days to seven days late, they're down to 80% value. If they're two weeks late, they're at 50% value. If they're after two weeks late, they're zero. This is only a 15-week class, so you can't get behind. Being always behind will make you not successful. Um, and then again, if it's perfect and you're only late by, you know, you, you miss the deadline, but you turn it in the next day, you're starting at a 90%. And what's a 90% on my grade scale? A B already, right? I mean, it's not a lot. If it's a 10-point assignment, don't freak out or all of that. But I'm just saying, it's not worth it, okay? Get your work done on time. There's only six big projects in this class besides what we actually do in class and you know, if you follow along and do it in class, you get those points instantly. It's a no-brainer. It's super easy. I don't look at them. I walk around and see that you did your work and you get points. So there's not a lot of assignments. So take those deadlines seriously. <clears throat> um, attendance and missed classes. So why do we care? It's college. You paid your money. I mean, I honestly had a class in college with 300 people, and I thought, why do I have to show up here? This is ridiculous. <laughs> they don't know if I'm here. Um, it's true, you've paid your money to be here, but you've also taken a seat in a, a lab with only 20 people, and there's an online section who may have been really wanting to be in person but couldn't. So because of that, and because of our mission as a tech college is to prepare you for the workforce, we have advisory committees that tell us what's important, what they're looking for in new hires, and it's software-based. Like, they got to know Photoshop, they got to know InDesign, they have to be... Um, good at web, but guess what? You know what they tell us more often than that? They have to show up. They have to come to work. Does that seem silly to you guys? Or does that seem like, yeah, I can see where that could be an issue in some jobs, right? You have to show up. You have to be on time. You have to do your job. You have to talk to people. Sometimes you have to work in groups. Sometimes you have to do critical thinking a lot. Sometimes you have to take criticism, constructive criticism from people. How are you going to handle all that? The soft skills are huge, okay? You might be the world's best designer, but if you don't show up and you're a jerk, you won't keep a job. I promise you. <laughs> you won't. You won't. So we work on that. And because of that, I do take attendance, and it does matter. If you have two unexcused absences, meaning I don't know about it, you didn't tell me squat about it, you just fell off the radar, you fail the class. If you tell me, hey, I'm sorry, I have a doctor's appointment, it's the only time I could get in, that's one-on-one -on -one with me. We work through all of that. Um, did we have a bad winter last year? Anybody remember January, February? Right. So the school closed down a lot, let's be honest. But there were days that people are like, I, I can't even get down my driveway. And I believe them. <laughs> so as long as you're in communication with me, if you know about it ahead of time, tell me ahead of time. If you're puking all night and you wake up at 10 a.m. because you've been puking all night, sorry, tell me, send me an email and say, I'm sorry, I missed today, I'm puking. I will check Blackboard and see what I missed and get caught up. That's like my favorite email. Not, did I miss anything? Because <laughs> guess what? You missed something. <laughs> so, 
Common sense, courtesy with me is going to be fine. It's the people that literally don't show up and um, habitually don't show up or turn in work that have problems. So that's the attendance side of it. Do you guys have any questions about that? Does it make sense on a logical basis? Plus, you're paying for this, and I assume you all want to learn, and it's fun, and you want to be here. Okay, um, disruptive classroom behavior. Um, things like conversational talking during lecture, not topic related. Um, if I'm trying to explain something and three people are back there chatting about whatever, eventually it it's awkward when you're the one talking and people are doing that and you're trying to block them out and keep talking, but it's also annoying for the people sitting around you. So just be respectful. Um, obviously, if you're stuck on something and you lean over and say, hey, where's that tool? That's fine. I get that. It's the conversational stuff. Um, printing assignments during lecture. So there's the printer. If all of a sudden it goes, it powers up and um, everybody looks at it and then looks at me and we all look to see who the culprit is. That's not good. You'll have plenty of time to print, just don't do it during the lectures. Um, speaking of that, this printer is not yet networked, meaning it doesn't charge you when you print here, like every other room in this place. Um, but graphic and web budget pays for everything there. So use it respectfully, okay? Don't print like 60 page PDFs of your psychology book in here, okay? I'll find you and track you down. <laughs> Use this for graphic and web work, okay? All right, college-wide policies. They're in here, but because they're on um, our bridge, a bridge, blackboard shell, um, they're hyperlinked as well. So you may have already had two or three classes and gone through these, but by the law of the land, I have to go through these with you also once. So we get to go through this, and I'll say the same thing in Photoshop on Monday because we just have to. So um, student handbook, there are rights and responsibilities that you have as a student here. So there's a link to the student handbook. Um, ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act. So if you have a physical or cognitive disability <laughs> that you might need some accommodations for, um, please see Patrick. He's down in the student services library area <coughs> and he can work with you if you need, um, if you have some issues maybe with um, reading or seeing or vision or hearing or you need some extra time for testing due to um, a documented disability. So the IEPs that you get throughout K-12, if you have that, Patrick is who you need to see. Um, student code of conduct, there's a link to that as well. Um, plagiarism, so you guys know what that is, especially when it relates to writing a paper for maybe like a psychology class, right? You know what plagiarism is. But what's plagiarism in the design world? What's that look like? Any guesses? <laughs> right? <laughs> and putting your name on it and submitting it? <laughs> so it's pretty easy to find stuff on the web and steal it or to right click on something and save it to your computer. Um, that's the same thing as plagiarism. You don't do that, obviously. And you also, as a graphic designer, as a professional, don't do that in the real world. You don't steal somebody else's logo and you know, make it, copy it and call it your own. There's copyrights and legal issues there. So that um, is a little bit different in our world. Um, cheating, um, here's something you're gonna be happy to hear. I don't know that we have, there are no tests in these classes. I don't even think I have a quiz in this class. It's just project-based, okay? Learning the software and um, making things with it. All right, discrimination, sexual misconduct, not tolerated on campus in any form. Um, if you have any issues with this or feel uncomfortable in any way, shape, or form, talk to me if you feel comfortable talking to me and I can help point you in the right direction. Um, you can um, file something online, but there's tons of resources and policies right here. So you should feel safe and comfortable being here, period. Uh, behavioral intervention team for student and staff safety. We have this behavioral intervention team on campus. Um, so if there's some signs of a student potentially harming themselves or others, or they're just not behaving in a safe, right way in class, um, this is a, re a referral that you as a student can use also if you're uncomfortable with something. And it doesn't mean that the other person is wrong or did anything necessary. I mean, it's not that. They just kind of look into it and see, you know, is this worth following up or is this just kind of 
is this person, whatever, I don't know, I can't explain that very well, but if you feel any discomfort there, that's a resource you can use as well. Concealed weapons are not allowed on campus. Um, and then there's lots of campus resources. So um, the one thing I wanna mention is tutoring. So there's academic support and tutoring down in the library. Um, so if you have any gen eds, they'll help you, like maybe there's a psychology study group. Maybe if you wanna have them um, proofread your paper before you turn it in, they can help with that. But specifically for graphic and web design, um, if you need a peer tutor for this class or Photoshop, talk to me and I'll get you set up. And the cool thing about peer tutoring is that it's a second year student. So they had this class last year. They're gonna act all worldly and knowledgeable and they are, but they were in the same spot you are now. They were freaking out exactly like you are one year ago. So they get it. Um, I'll pair you up with them. It's free to you and they actually get paid um, to help tutor. So it's a win-win. But the even better thing that we're working on is having drop-in tutoring where Monday and or Tuesday noon hours. So you guys are going to be here. Monday's for Photoshop, Tuesday's for Illustrator. We're done at noon. Over the noon hour, we're going to have a second year tutor just come in and hang out in this room and be available for any and all questions for whoever's in here. So it's not like appointment based or anything else. They're just going to hang out in the Mac lab for that hour and be available for anything you need. Like maybe you're just working on your homework and you're stuck or you want them to explain something, they're available. Okay. All right. Um, all of these different things that are available on campus are awesome resources. We do anything and everything to help you be successful here. We really do. Um, there's the career closet where people have donated clothing from interview wear down to casual everyday wear that's 100% free for you. Um, you're looking for a jacket for an interview, just go check out the career closet. So there's just tons of cool resources. Um, career placement center, you know, we're going to help you in class in Mary's class next year with resumes and interview skills. And if you um, are looking for internships and things like that, we have an awesome resource. All right, this one should probably be up a little bit higher, but it is a campus-wide topic. But stopping attendance in a class does not constitute withdrawing from a class. So just because you stopped coming doesn't mean that you dropped the class or quit it or withdrew. You actually have to formally do that with paperwork, right? There's also financial aid implications. So if you are getting financial aid and you only come to three weeks of class, you're on the hook for all of the financial aid they gave you if you drop quit or just stop coming. Okay, so don't drop a class without talking to your advisor and making sure that it's going to be okay with your financial aid and that there's nothing else that we could try to figure out to help. Um, there's an emergency grant. If there's anything um, in your personal life, you know, food or a safe place to live, anything like that, we do have emergency grants and there's a link to that as well. Um, outside of classwork, this is college, you need to kind of prepare for outside of class work. I've told you that week to week work, if you stay here in class, you almost always get it done. But when it comes to projects and other things, and as you move on in your career here past this first term, you are gonna have more of a workload than you did in high school, I presume. So be prepared for that. Um, the library, we have an awesome library down at the end of campus and we have amazing um, resources there from books and films and online resources. But the other thing that I want you to know that they have that I think is amazing is you can check out a laptop for a week. It's not going to have the Adobe Creative Cloud on it and you, I don't know that you can download to it because it might be locked down. We can work around that if you need a situation. So say something happens at home, your computer dies, you're stuck. <clears throat> there are resources on campus. Um, they also loan out iPads, um, Nooks and Kindles, those readers. Um, they have charging cords for your phones, should you forget that. They have headphones, they have video cameras, they have cameras, they have all sorts of stuff. Um, lots and lots of resources there. And again, it's available to you as a student. It's not going to cost you money. So keep that in mind. Um, email is how I need you to communicate with me via your student email to my email. Um, I say that because if you tell me for some reason that you contacted me, 
via email, I'm going to search for your student email because that's the only way I know you. If you send it from your personal email that's crazycatlady at AOL.com, I don't know to search for that. I'm not going to find it necessarily. So all things need to go through your student email to my email. Um, I will get back to you as quickly as possible. I check it on my computers, on my phone. I'm always looking at it. Um, realistically, if you send me something at 11 at night, I'm probably not going to see it until the morning. Um, I do like to sleep. So <laughs> I think um, I, my response time, I think, is pretty quick. But there are times when it's not. Or like on a day like today, if somebody from another class is emailing me today, I teach all day today, all morning, all afternoon. I'm not going to get to it until 4 or 5 o'clock, period, just because I don't have the ability to. So every now and then, you know, it's not going to be as fast as you might want. Weather-related school closures. So on the My LTC portal, where you can go and check your final grades and your financial aid and make sure that your home address is correct, you probably put on there a personal email, a cell phone, a home phone, all that stuff. When we have bad weather, that's going to happen. <laughs> right? That was perfect. Um, if they're going to close school, if you have a home phone, I don't know if anybody does anymore, but you'll hear that ring. And then as that ring, your cell phone's going to start going off. <laughs> and the minute you check email, you're going to have an email there. They're going to tell you via every medium possible that there's no school, don't drive in. So watch for that. Um, I'll post something on Blackboard how we're handling our class. If it's a class that I think, okay, we can we can double up, we'll get it all caught up, it'll be fine, I'll tell you that. But if I'm like, man, we got to stay on track, you guys have to do Learning Plan 3 this week and, you know, learn it and do it, I'll tell you that too. So it's not a necessarily a free card that that class didn't exist. You might have to do something online. All right, and your student email. Has everybody been able to get into their student email and find it? Okay, all right, good. All right, I do have a weekly schedule down here as well. And for the most part, it should look like this unless some weird things happen, like, I don't know, a snow day in the fall, or I'm so sick that I can't drag myself here, something like that. But basically, um, we're going to just go through the book and have some projects due. You see every now and then there's some projects that are due. So once you learn enough skills to do something, we'll have projects involved with that. Um, fall break is fall break is the 15th through the 18th, but we still do have a Monday class that week, I believe. Yes. So we do have Monday the 14th, so Photoshop will meet that class that week. And the reason is Labor Day yesterday threw us off, right? So fall break is Tuesday through Friday. Um, Thanksgiving break is a Wednesday through Friday, so it doesn't affect this class at all. So we just have that one break in there. If anything changes, um, this I'm not going to change that much because we'll just know what's going on. It also, did I have it in your syllabus? No, I didn't. Um, but Blackboard itself will be up to date and current. Lesson plan one, lesson plan two, learning plan, whatever, that's going to be the gospel truth. Um, if we get off schedule, we'll just deal with it here. Okay. Um, so any questions on the syllabus or um, policies that I have or anything else? Any worries? Anybody have any like fears in general that they want to be brave and share that everybody's thinking about and they just don't want to say out loud. Time management, kind of a fear, especially for you working people. <laughs> yeah. I might have gotten the Adobe student version and not used that link. Oh, okay. Is there a way that I can just cancel that and Yes, the... there has been in the past. I will look into that. Um, yeah, because it's, yes, I'll talk okay. to you. <laughs> yeah. You want to use, because it's a much cheaper deal, it's a better um, financial deal, that 125 um, The cool thing about that, also while we're talking about that, is so you get that subscription to the Creative Cloud, you use your school email for it, and then when you're here at school, you're going to log in. All the software is here physically on these machines, but you can't use it without logging in. So even though Illustrator is on this machine, you're not going to be able to use it without logging in. So 
you'll log into yourself, your own identity, and everything will show up. And as we get going in this, say you've made a really cool custom <coughs> brush and saved it in a library, because you're logging into your own identity, it's going to be here also. It's not just going to be at home or whatever. Um, once you get your subscription, you download the apps, meaning you download Illustrator, you download Photoshop, those are applications. Um, I would not download all 15 of the Adobe apps just because you own them now. Um, there's many that we're going to get to, but they do take space and RAM on your computer. So for sure, get Photoshop and Illustrator right now, right? Download those. If you have a desktop at home and a laptop at home, and you're often over at um, your best friend's cabin all weekend and they have a computer, you can download these apps in multiple places. You can have them existing on 15 different computers if you happen to own that many or have access to that many, but you can only be logged into two at a time, okay? So if you were up at grandma's cabin all weekend and working on Adobe and you're also logged in at home and you come to school, it's gonna say you're already logged in in two places. Do you wanna log off so you can log in here? And you just say yes. In other subscription things that I've had years ago, you had to physically log off at the location. And that wasn't always good because if you're logged in at home and at grandma's cabin, you were, and you're here, you're screwed basically. So it's, it's good. So you have access to it anywhere and everywhere. Also with your own creative cloud account, um, there are tons of apps for your phone, whether you have a Android or a iPhone or a iOS. Um, there's some really cool apps. Um, there's a color capturing one where you can be walking around and take a picture of a cool color that you like and it automatically syncs to your account and it's available here when you sit down at the computer. Or you see a font that you like and you take a picture of it and it helps you identify what that font is. Okay, so Kelly's gonna talk more about that in Computer Platform Essentials and we're always gonna try to bring it up and work it in where we can, but really explore all those cool extra options that we can't teach. Um, we can't teach the whole Creative Cloud suite because we only have, well, your whole degree has 60 credits, but that includes gen eds. So we just don't have enough time to literally teach everything that we want to. Okay. All right. Why don't we stop here and take a break and we're going to troubleshoot um, some login issues. Are there two of you that don't have Creative Cloud right now? Just two of you that don't have subscriptions? Mm -hmm. Who is the other? Okay, just the two of you? Okay, I'm gonna to talk to my coworkers and see if I can use their identities to get you logged in, just so you can follow along this first day of class, okay? And then I'll help you with getting in. So at least 10 minutes, maybe longer, because we might be troubleshooting longer. So just kind of be back here by five after for sure, okay? Um, if you aren't familiar with campus, the women's bathroom is right here, but the men's is nowhere near, which is very odd, right? It's not far, other hall, that way, or there's other ones, but it's not next to it like in most normal worlds. Um, cafeteria has vending machines. It's probably, it is open, I'm sure, for coffee or tea or whatever you need. So um, you can have drinks in here, but we need you to have a lid on them in case they spill. And... Um, you can somewhat snack in here, but we're not going to have Cheetos and have orange fingers all over everything. So um, be respectful of the food and drink in here and don't push it and we'll be just fine. But I, you can have drinks in here. Yep. I'll leave just the beef jerky then. Beef jerky will work. Just keep it off the keyboard. <laughs> all right. Go ahead and uh, take a break then. Sorry, my sister.